Spurs were cruising, winning 3 0 at half time. Hunmin Son and Harry Kane were on fire. Gareth Bale makes his second Tottenham debut, and somehow West Ham go away with a point. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It is game day today. Tottenham Hotspur v West Ham United. Of course, we take on our London rivals in our fifth Premier League game of this season. They are in good form in the last two games. They have beaten Wolves 4-0 and beaten Leicester 3-0 away. But Tottenham are in fantastic form right now. Our last two games, we have scored 13 goals, seven against Maccabi Haifa and six at Old Trafford when we beat Manchester United 6-1 two weeks ago just before the international break. It was the end of the domestic transfer window on Friday and Tottenham Hotspur done some more business, making it seven players in in this transfer window for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Uh, a brilliant window, if I'm completely honest, and full credit must go to Tottenham head coach Jose Mourinho, uh, Steve Hitchin and Daniel Levy as we signed Joe Roden on Friday from Swansea City. Um, you know, another piece of the jigsaw and uh, it's got lots more people talking about Tottenham now challenging for this season's Premier League. And I can't even believe I'm saying that. I feel so excited um, about out supporting Spurs at the moment and I'm just hoping that Tottenham don't let us down today and we get the three points because Tottenham with a win today could go back into the top four. The big question today is will Tottenham superstar Gareth Bale be in the starting lineup or will he be named as a substitute today um, for the game against West Ham? I'm hoping that we see him today. I can't wait to see the scenes when Harry Kane, Hunmin Son and Gareth Bale are all playing in the same team for my club Tottenham Hotspur. I'm just super excited about it. I really, really am. Um, I've gone full circle this week. At the start of the week, I thought... Surely Jose Mourinho will have to put Gareth Bale on the bench and then he'll bring him on, uh, you know, for, for a big entry, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to be coming back to Tottenham. And then yesterday when I'd done my match preview, I thought, no, surely Gareth Bale has got to be in the team. You know, that starting lineup, uh, you know, with those forward front three would be amazing. But, um, you know, I've got up this morning and I thought, no, I think that uh, Jose Mourinho will name Gareth Bale as a sub. But whatever happens, I hope that we do see him today because, you know, it's been seven long years without him. He always thought that he'd come back. A lot of us fans thought he, he would come back. So it's a dream come true, you know, for both parties. So I'm hoping that it will be a great return for him. And, uh, you know, I think if he gets some minutes today, even if it's 10, 20, 30 minutes on the pitch, I think he will score. So I've now got Matt Hayes with me, who runs the Matt Hayes Tottenham blog channel on YouTube. Do check that out. The uh, the links in the channel uh, description below. Uh, Matt, West Ham today in the Premier League. How do you see this game going? Uh, well, look. First of all, thanks really for having me on, Chris. I do really appreciate it. Um, I think this is. I think it's going to be a win for Tottenham. You know, I think over, over the international break, we've seen a few of our players do well, and of course the the boost of having players like Son and Bale staying in in London doing their training, and of course Bale back to full fitness. I think the, the confidence has been building over the, over the international break, but, you know, typical Tottenham fan, it's, it's game day now and the nerves are starting to creep in. But uh, I, I do feel as though we can, get, we can get three points here. I know, look, West Ham run fantastic form. Uh, of course, they got that deal for Saeed Ben Rama over the line on Friday, but I'm not sure he's actually going to be able to play uh, in this one today. But you know, I, I do feel we can get a, a comfortable win in this one. And I feel it's one that could put, it, put us into a title race because, look, I know a lot of Tottenham fans have been reluctant to talk about this, uh, you know, because look, at the end of the day, we're not a team who typically have been uh, in, in title challenges but with City dropping points before the international break Liverpool still on poor form we win this game today we're only three points behind Everton at the top of the table I don't see why we shouldn't start talking about it Matt I love that uh, 30 seconds into the interview you're talking about the title already <laughs> <laughs> oh we have to we have to <laughs> yeah. is it all of us Tottenham fans just getting completely carried away or do you think that we have real strength in depth because Harry Redknapp keeps saying it David Ginola said it a week or so ago I even spoke to Dimitar Berbatov on this channel a week or so ago, and he said that if Tottenham can be consistent, we could be real challengers. Do you really believe that? I, I honestly do, and like, look, it, it's a weird, it's a weird feeling for a Tottenham fan to be in a position where we can say that, and like, even weird at deadline day, we were so relaxed that we had our deals done. But it's all about that transfer business that we got over the line because you can look at last year, we made two really, really big financial signings in, in terms of Ndombele and Lacelso, and while I do think they were very good signings, and at, they are now turning out to be fantastic players, I think. The, the business we've done this summer has been a lot more astute and we've 
we've uh, identified the problem areas of the team, but we fixed every single one of them. And at the yeah. end of the last chance window, no, we made great signings, but we still didn't have a striker. Uh, we still were perhaps a bit weak in midfield. We were looking for that that enforcer, that Dembele replacement, which I think we've got th- this season in Pierre Emil Hoybier. And you know, it is when you start to see people like Harry Redknapp and, and Ginola and, and Berbatov talking out about our chances in the title, uh, in the title race. And look, it's it's Jose Mourinho's second season. It, it's always been the, the big year for him, barring of course that that season that uh, time he spent at United, which when you look at his career it has been a massive outlier but I, I, I think it is time to start talking about this because the Premier League has been so unpredictable this season you know no one would have said Villa would beat Liverpool 7-2 no one would, would even have said we'd go to Old Trafford and win so comfortably but they're not they're not rare events in the league this season everything is unpredictable and you know if Leicester could do it four years ago why can't we do it this year? But it was played down heavily by Tottenham head coach Jose Mourinho and of course Tottenham chairman Daniel Levy that you know not not much would happen in this transfer window. We have signed seven players. We're all super excited. They are seven very good signings. You know some very experienced and leaders. Uh, you know coming in. You spoke to uh, lucky enough to speak to Fabrizio Romano the other day about the transfer window. Uh, what was his take on it, and what is your take on it? Uh, the seven players that we've brought in. Um, well, it was actually a question I was very interested to ask him, but he, he was very complimentary of Tottenham's business, business this season. He said, you know, a, a term, in terms of Regulon, he said he thinks he's one of the best left-backs in the world uh, with Gareth Bale. There is, of course, that sentimental value uh, to that signing, but you, you can't ignore the quality he does have on the pitch. And even his former teammate, Casemiro, said when he's on his day, he's one of the, one of the top five in the world. So I, I, I do have to agree with Romano that we've had a fantastic window and the signings, we didn't even spend that much money. I think that's something that does have to be mentioned. And you're talking about Daniel Levy, the work he's done, and, and Steve Hitchin as well. You know, we're a, a bit uh, disappointed not to get that Milan Skriniar deal over the line, but I think the business that we did do has been so, so clever. And we're, we're hearing with, with all these players that we did sign, it was, you know, uh, Vinicius was Mourinho's number one choice for striker. Hoybier was his number one choice for midfield. Uh, the only winger and left-back would even entertain the possibility of signing this window were Bale and Regulon. So we've gone out and we've got these deals done, which the, it's, it's not something Tottenham usually do, but in terms of like the big, big teams, they always identify their targets, but they don't get all of them over the line. And it seems as though Tottenham have managed to do that this uh, this summer. And like, again, Romano was talking about our title or our chances of winning the league. And he said the possibility is there. Of course, it's going to be very, very difficult. But with, with the way things are going, I don't think there's anything to say, anything that can right now rule us out of a title challenge. Well, I said on my channel yesterday, Matt, that I think this is probably the best transfer window in my lifetime that I've known. Uh, so probably yours as well. Um, but... You know, trophies. We are way, way overdue trophies. I talk about trophies every week on my channel. You know, surely Tottenham have got to do it this year. And when you think that the year ends in one, you know, that classic old saying. And of course, Jose Mourinho's first full season at a club, he normally delivers. Are you confident that we will uh, get some trophies in this season? I have never been as confident as I am this season that we can win a trophy. Because, again, talking about the, the struggles that City and Liverpool are having domestically, for City, they've, they've won the Premier League, they've won the FA Cup, they've won the Carabao Cup. All Guardiola wants is that Champions League trophy. So for them, I think as we've seen with uh, a lot of foreign managers in the past of the Premier League, they don't put a lot of priority on domestic competition. And I think Liverpool as well with their struggles, uh, they're going to want to go out and attack that Premier League again because they do need to put everything in that, especially looking at Van Dijk, who could potentially be out for the rest of the season. So there's going to be a lot of other teams focusing on other things. And I think Tottenham are uh, in, in some way kind of going under the radar as a team that can compete this season, which look, I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd like to get the recognition that we are a fantastic team, but it's also great if we can go under the radar and kind of sneak in uh, with, with a domestic trophy. I'd love, of course, we'd all love to see uh, an FA Cup. It's been almost 30 years since uh, we've won one. And then I think we do have a shot at the Europa League. You know, there are some very big competitors in that. Napoli have an, a sensational squad and of course added Victor Zimpen to that this season. By Leverkusen, I think our team that will be underestimated having lost Kai Havertz and Kevin Volland but they've brought in some good players as well. And they, they do still have a very good squad in place there. And of course, AC Milan have to be mentioned as well. But I think with, with Jose Mourinho, he's been in the, Euro, in the Europa League twice and he's won it twice. So I don't see, again, why, with this fantastic squad that we have, I don't know why we can't win that one either. Matt, what have you made of Tottenham's uh, style of play this season? Because we have been very, very attacking. When you think back to those last nine games, you know, after lockdown, uh, of last season. You know, we didn't even have a shot on target against Bournemouth away, for example. And then when you look at how many shots on target we had against Newcastle at home, I know we drew the one, the game 1-1, but then we scored seven against Maccabi Haifa, six against Manchester United. We just look so threatening going forward. And Gareth Bale hasn't even played in this team yet. It's it's so exciting. It really is. But look, it, it comes back to, I think, when, when Jose Mourinho first got this job at Tottenham, I, I, I wouldn't say I was a critic of the decision, but I was certainly very sceptical about it. And it felt as though well, we were getting a manager who was won a lot. It was a bit of a step back in terms of the project that was going on at the club. And Mourinho, he came in, he said he had his nine months off. He, he said he's, uh, made, he's a new manager, he's a new person. And again, there was a lot of scepticism around that. But 
we had then this this management team coming in from from Lille, Joe Sacramento was the assistant coach, and uh, of course Ricardo from Formazinho as well in that background staff as well. Uh, managers who, despite not being in the game for for long, are known for their attacking style of play. And I think you know I was, as I said, very skeptical about those comments, but I think we're starting to see that now because Mourinho was building the squad that he wants. He's he's handpicked these players from around Europe, and the the, the recruitment team have done so well to get them in that we're now starting to see you know his team, his tactics are going to start creeping through a bit more. And it has to be mentioned the the kind of change that we've seen in Harry Kane, and you know a lot of people are talking about this moment in the in the Amazon documentary where Mourinho said to Kane, he said he's going to push him onto that next level, and well we all thought that was going to be in terms of getting you know thirty plus goals every season. Well, that still does look possible. It's this yeah. kind of deeper deeper position he's fallen into, and he, he's orchestrating things. And I think it's essentially a couple of years ago, you know, we had Christian Eriksen and Harry Kane, with Eriksen being the playmaker and Kane being the goal scorer. Harry Kane is almost those two players in one now. And as you say, we still have to add Gareth Bale into that team. It's it's amazing to see us play this attacking type of football because you know it was kind of the the, the main thing under Pochettino, the thing that we did love love the most, the the free flowing football, the the movement along that front three. And I think we are starting to see that coming out with Mourinho. And well, it was great with Pochettino, we're seeing it now with Mourinho, but we also have that winning mentality creeping in as well, which is is going to be priceless for us. Matt, it's super exciting stuff about Gareth Bale coming back. I've gone full circle this week. At the start of the week, I thought Gareth Bale would be a substitute today against West Ham. Yesterday, when I put my match preview out, I, I think that I was super excited saying, no, Jose Mourinho surely got to put me in the starting lineup. I woke up this morning and I thought that Gareth Bale will probably be a sub today. What are your thoughts? Look, I think it's, it's, <laughs> he's just unpredictable at this stage, Jose Mourinho. Um, I've seen a, a lot of posts on Twitter today, which I, I do agree with to some extent that there, there's no reason why he should change that team uh, that played against Manchester United before the international break. But again, Bale, you know, he, he hasn't played in so long. He's been in full training. He's looking happy. He's looking fit. He's looking sharp. Of course, we've yeah. seen those videos uh, of him training. I know we're only going to see the best moments, but he, he's looking good there as well. I think it was interesting to say what, that he said, you know, he, he confirmed Harry Kane would start today, but he said if Bale doesn't play on Sunday, he will play on Thursday. So I think he is kind of leaving that door open a bit to leave him out of the starting 11. But I personally would start him, but I'm not too sure that Mourinho will. But it, even if he doesn't start, I think we will see him from the bench. And I think we'll see a, a very good cameo role from him, if that is the case. Well, I just can't wait to see Harry Kane, Hun Min Son and Gareth Bale all in the same shirt, playing on the same team. Incredible scenes. Before I ask you for your score prediction, um, talk us uh, you know, a little bit about your, your channel, because you put a lot of co- Tottenham content out, don't you? Yeah, yeah. my channel is, uh, it's Matt Hayes Tottenham blog, as you said. It's, it's based mainly, I suppose, on the on the transfer window I suppose is when I, when I put out most of my content I know it's coming to an end now but I have started the, uh, the, the Tottenham Fan Voice podcast on my channel which is going to be a, a weekly thing every Friday um, I had worked for Rizzo Romano on last Friday which was an absolute massive pleasure for me uh, we're hoping to get some more big guests on in the future I do have a Sky Sports reporter coming on uh, this Friday as well and we'll be revealing that name pretty soon but yeah it's mainly just going to be podcasts and stuff for, for the next couple of months but once that transfer window opens again we're going to be uh, daily content uh, interactive live streams and stuff as well uh, getting the, the opinions of the fans on board as well Superb, so do check that out. Matt, I've got to ask you for a score prediction and uh, feel free to give me a predicted lineup if you wish. Um, I suppose in terms of predicted lineup, I think fairly similar to what we saw against uh, against Manchester United. Maybe we might see uh, under Viral back in that team, but I think you're looking at the attack at West Ham do have with Mikel Antonio. I think Davinson Sanchez could be a very good option to kind of deal with the, the pace and power of him. But I don't think there's going to be too many changes. I'd say Regalan and, and Aurier as well. Uh, midfield probably say the same perhaps with the reintroduction of, of La Celso if he does pass fit but I think that's unlikely at the moment um, and then it's just between uh, will it be Lamella or Bale I think both would be fantastic options for different reasons but I think we, we won't see too many changes from that United game uh, as far as score predictions go I, I, I like you said you've gone full circle with Bale starting I think I've been the same you know it's been oh it's going to be a massive win or then you know, I've gone back to it. it's going to be a Spursy performance you know we always see it when the big teams drop points we, we usually do the same but I'm going to go for a win because I think we, we do have that, uh, as I said, the winning mentality creeping in. So I'm going to say 3-1 to Spurs and hope that I don't live to regret that. I'm going 3-1 as well. And the interesting thing, actually, all week when I've been putting videos out, you always have one or two Spurs fans a little bit nervous and say, no, I think we'll draw this one or I think we'll lose it. I haven't mm-hmm. seen one of them comment. Every single uh, comment has been a Tottenham win. So everyone is super confident at the moment, which is fantastic. Matt, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, look forward to you coming back on the channel again, hopefully soon. uh, And come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Thanks, William, Chris. We're now just an hour before kickoff. The team lineup has just been announced and Gareth Bale is on the bench for Tottenham Hotspur. The starting 11 is Hugo Lloris, Serge Aurier, Toby Alderweireld, Davinson Sanchez, Sergio Reguilon, Pierre-Emil Hoybier, um, Musa Sissoko, Tongi Ondombele, Steven Bergwijn, Harry Kane and Hunmin Son. And the subs are Joe Hart, 
Matt Doherty, Ben Davis, Harry Winks, Lucas Moura, Gareth Bale and Carlos Vinicius. So come on you Spurs, my prediction today is 3-1. So it's now half-time, Tottenham Hotspur 3, West Ham United nil. an unbelievable 45 minutes from Tottenham Hotspur. Of course, it started after 45 seconds, we went 1-0 up. What a ball from Harry Kane to put Hun Min Son through. The speed of Hun Min Son and the finish was absolutely exceptional. We expect nothing uh, less now from the, uh, the likes of Harry Kane and Hun Min Son. And then Hun Min Son returned the favour to Harry Kane. In just the seventh minute, Tottenham went 2-0 up. A wonderful, wonderful strike from Harry Kane. 2-0 after seven minutes. And then after 15 minutes, Sergio Reguilon. What a cross for Harry Kane to head a home. The wonderful, wonderful cross from Sergio Reguilon. And uh, a super, super finish from Harry Kane. Spurs are on fire. Harry Kane and Hun Min Son are on absolute fire yet again. And of course... Uh, you know, what a display it was from them a couple of weeks ago against Manchester United, and they have continued it today. Anyway, I'm now going to speak to Spurs fan Dave to get his thoughts on the first half. So, Dave, it's half-time. Spurs 3, West Ham United nil. What have you made of that? <laughs> well, it's almost a perfect 45 minutes, I think. Started off brilliantly. I mean, it's Kane. It's a Sonny and Kane show again, isn't it? This time, Kane with two and Sonny with one. I mean... From that, that pass that Harry did in the first, well, it was less than a minute, 50, 54 seconds, was it? I mean, oh, how he did that bench? I mean, I don't know how he did it. He must have eyes in the back of his head because the way he swiveled round and just launched that ball and he knew exactly where Sonny was. Sonny turned the bloke inside out and drilled it inside the post. I mean, what a perfect start. I mean, if we knew he was up and running then. And then Harry with another one after eight minutes. I mean, uh, perfect. I think I'm, I'm losing count. I mean, what, what I think it was the third goal was the um, the the, uh, the cross by uh, Regulon. Yeah. Um, and then the second one was when uh, Harry nutmegged him. Harry met the uh, the bloke and drilled it inside the post, didn't he? Dave, the quality of the goals have been exceptional, haven't they? Oh. They can't lay a glove on him. They can't lay a glove on Harry or Sonny. I mean, this is without Bow. We've got Bow in reserve here. I mean, um, he's surely going to come on after 60 minutes and get well, a couple of Say Bow in reserve. Yeah, well, I said, I texted a, a West Ham fan of mine and I said before the game, 5 0, and how about Harry Kane that trick? And uh, I'm nearly right. <laughs> Yeah. Dave, at the moment, Tottenham are sitting second in the Premier League. Are they really? Oh. Can we stop getting carried away? Yeah. We can? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really been... I mean, we've kept West Ham at bay. I mean, I'm picking up all the second balls. Um, I mean, Hobier is doing a fantastic job. He's just like... I mean, I've got... I don't really know what fantastic boy he is. He's just lay, he just sits in there, picks up all these loose balls, put um I mean it, he's his role is just goes under the radar really because what everybody should have a Heiberg in their team. Yeah. He really is an unsung hero. And I think Don Donbale is a good game and um I really do. Bergwald was unlucky with one shot, wasn't he? But um I mean, really, they've been they've been trying to score the perfect goal, haven't they, Spurs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, three perfect goals so far. Dave, enjoy the second half, and I'll speak to you soon. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Let's have another three. <laughs> so the game has just ended. Spurs three, West Ham three. I can't believe I'm saying that. I cannot believe that Tottenham have not picked up the three points today. In the first half, the game looked dead and buried at half-time. You just thought Tottenham were going to go on to score more goals or even just put the game to bed. 3-0 up. 3-0 up. How on earth are we let West Ham um, into that game and uh, to you know for them to take a point away from it? I just can't understand it. Gareth Bale, of course, come on in the second half. It looked fantastic um, You know to see him, Hun Min Son and Harry Kane on the pitch. You know Something I've been looking forward to for a very long time. And uh, Gareth Bale had a real opportunity to put the game to bed and to win the game for Spurs. And uh, I can't believe he missed it. You know, when as soon as he had the ball at his feet, he turned and, uh, and shot. And I was celebrating. 
celebrating, thinking uh, Gareth Bale had put the ball in the net and it went wide. But how on earth have we let West Ham into that game? Um, I feel like we've been robbed. I really, really do. Tottenham at 3 0 up at half time. Um, some liquid football, some super football in the first half from Tottenham. And uh, we have just let West Ham into this game and they have gone away with a point. I just feel gutted. Absolutely gutted. I can't believe it, if I'm honest. Just cannot believe the result. 3-3. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Um, Tottenham's next game now is Thursday night at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium against Lask in the Europa League. And then, of course, we play Burnley next weekend. But please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. But I am very, very disappointed with today's result.